we've gone ahead and have drawn this pizza and we've labeled the two radii, the central angle theta. We might need a little refresher on how we know the length of this sort of arc or crust of the pizza. And we might remember from a pre-calculus course that arc length, which is usually symbolized by S, is equal to the radius of the circle multiplied by the central angle, as long as that central angle is in radians. So this is why we have labeled that arc length as R times theta. The next thing we need to do after drawing a good label diagram is to come up with what I like to call our constraint equation. And the constraint equation is typically based on the number that is given in the problem. So in this case, we know that the perimeter of this slice of pizza is 32 inches. Of course, perimeter simply means that we have to add the lengths of the sides of the pizza. So this length here, this length here, and then the curved length of the slice of pizza. So we know that r plus r plus r theta must equal that constrained value of 32 inches. Of course, we could simplify this so we could write 2r plus r theta is equal to 32. So that represents our constraint, and we're gonna kind of handle that in just a moment. But another equation you need for optimization is known as your objective. And the objective is based on whatever it is you're trying to either maximize or minimize. In this case, we are trying to reward ourselves with the largest slice. And what of course that means is that we want our slice of pizza to have the largest possible area. Now, the area of a sector, which is basically a slice of a circle, the area of a sector is equal to one half times the radius squared times the central angle theta, again, as long as theta is in radians. Now, that's our objective, but the problem with the objective is that it is based on two variables, the radius and theta. It makes the problem easier if we can have the objective equation in terms of just a single variable. So this is where the constraint comes back in. You're gonna go back to your constraint, and what you're gonna do is solve for the easiest variable it is to solve for. So in this case, it's probably easiest to solve for theta. So let's take the constraint and solve for theta. To do that, we can begin by subtracting both sides of the equation by 2r. That'll cancel it on the left-hand side. And then divide both sides of the equation by the radius r to cancel it on the left side again. So this would be our expression for theta in terms of r. What we do is we take that expression and we plug it into the theta of our objective equation. And so when we do that, we will have the following. And if you notice, now your objective equation is in terms of just a single variable r, which makes the mathematics a lot easier. Now we can simplify this. Right here we have r squared divided by r. And so r squared divided by r is just r. So in other words, we can cancel a factor of r, leaving us with just one half r. And then we're going to distribute that one half r into the brackets. So we'll go ahead and do that next. 1 half r times 32 is going to be 16 r, and then minus 1 half r times the 2 r is just going to be 1 r squared. So that's a really nice looking objective equation. We wish to maximize this area. You could think of this graphically for a moment. You could think of the area on the vertical axis as a function of the radius on the horizontal axis, and we would have some curve, and at some point we would end up with a maximum maximum area. Now notice at the maximum, if we draw a tangent line there, that the slope of that tangent line is equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to compute the derivative, which is equivalent to the slope of the tangent line, and we're going to set it equal to zero. So let's go ahead and calculate a prime. We know the derivative of 16r would just be 16, and then the derivative of r squared is just 2r using a power rule. We then set this equal to zero, and we're going to solve this for the radius. Just subtract 16 from both sides, and then divide both sides by negative two. We can see that the radius is equal to r. And to demonstrate that this value of r actually does yield a maximum, we can do sort of a first derivative test. Now what we do on a first derivative test is we just plot our critical number on a number line. So in this case, r equals eight. Notice the smallest the radius could be would be zero. You can't have a pizza whose radius is less than zero. And so what we'll do is we'll just pick a value between zero and eight, as well as a value that's greater than eight, 
and we'll plug it into the derivative and investigate what goes on there. So for example, if we pick r is equal to one as a test value, we would plug that into the derivative. So we would have a prime of one. We're using this equation right up here for the derivative. That would equal 16 minus two times one. And when you simplify that, you're gonna get positive 14. Now, the fact that the derivative is positive means that the area function would be increasing within this little sub interval. So in other words, from zero to eight, we know that the area is increasing. On the other hand, if we choose a different test value, like r equals nine, and plug that into the derivative, we will see that we end up with a negative value for the derivative. We have 16 minus 18, so negative two. That means that the area function is decreasing in the other sub interval. So by the first derivative test, we can see that at exactly r is equal to eight, we end up with a maximum value for our area. So we know that the radius is equal to eight inches. The question wanted the diameter. So that's simple, diameter is equal to twice the radius. So we just double our radius and we end up with 16 inches as the correct answer.